Hi everyone, my name is Simi Who Girl. Welcome to my channel. If you've not heard of me before, I talk about all things Doctor Who, um, as you can see from the posters here. And I also do a little bit of The Sims, house building, things like that. I've not done it recently, but they are coming. So if you like that kind of thing as well, then please stick around. Today, I'm gonna be talking about something that I wasn't originally planning to be talking about. Um, so, how do I put this? <laughs> There's been a lot of controversy has been events that have been brought to light um that i'm not going to go into i don't feel like it's my place you know things have happened to very real people um with very real situations who have been hurt and i don't feel like it's my place to for want of better phrase cash in on um i just don't feel like it was my place to talk about but what i am going to be doing is bringing a little bit of positivity back to doctor who and talking about the women of Doctor Who. Now, I am not actually going to be restricting this to companions. This is going to be every female character that I enjoy, that I love in the series, and it's going to be something where I'm going to go into detail about why I love it and why I think this is important. Some of these choices I understand not a lot of people are really going to like because maybe one of your favourite characters is, you know, going to be in your list but it's not going to be in mine and this is where we chat and you tell me whether I'm right or wrong. <laughs> now just before I do get started I really really would love it if you could subscribe, press that button down there, give it a like, give it a comment. I'm also on Twitter, Instagram um, if you want to chat with me on there that would be perfect um, and just to reiterate about this whole reason why I'm doing this video I do feel like it is so so more than ever a time to stand together not only as women but as people I also tweeted that yesterday or the day before um I just think it's so important and just so everyone or anybody who is going through things at the moment my inbox is open my direct messages are open and you are so welcome to talk to me you are being listened to you are not being ignored and you are definitely not alone in this but without further ado, that is enough talking about situations that I don't really want to talk about. I want to talk about positive things. So here are my top 10 best female characters in Doctor Who. So kicking off with number 10, it is Astrid Peth from Voyage of the Damned. She's played by Kylie Minogue. If you haven't seen it, why have you not seen the episode? It's really good. Um, but she is somebody where you see her, you meet her as a shy, timid woman, you know, just sort of floating about bless her just wanting somewhere to belong just wants to travel wants to see places and you know hence why she got her job as a waitress her chemistry with Tennant is brilliant it's lovable they bounce off each other so so well uh, which is something that I really enjoy no matter whether it's a companion or someone who's just one off if they've got that chemistry with the doctor and the doctor has that chemistry back then I'm all over it. The reason I've put her as one of my favourites is because I warmed to her straight away. There was nothing that made me, you know, feel like I needed to dig a bit deeper into seeing what she was like. Um I just really, really loved her from the off. And you see her grow as well as a character. You really do see development in just one episode as well, which I thought was brilliant. Um you see her go from like I say this timid girl that doesn't really you know she doesn't want to get in the way she doesn't want to do anything then when she realizes the doctor is someone who can help her and and can help the doctor in return as well after you know just um losing martha it was great to see that happen it really really was and then of course at the end <laughs> this is not spoiler free none of it is going to be spoiler free i'm really sorry but pff, you should have watched it they were all out by now all these episodes that these characters are on they're all out so with the ending to the Voyage of the Damned, you know, she really does become this fully fledged character and in the end does give herself up or gives her life to save the Doctor. Um, and I just feel like that in itself, you know, I felt genuinely sad at that. I genuinely had emotion. Uh, and that's something that happens to me when I've got a character that I really, really enjoy. And for that reason, she is number 10 on my list. But I'm certainly not the worst um, because this is a best ranking, um, but she's uh, just not quite where all the others are. Number nine, I feel like I might have to explain this one a little bit, but it's not because she's bad. No one on this list is bad or, or you know, nothing on this list means that they're not the best character to anyone. But my number nine is Bill Potts. Now, I don't know if I actually will need to explain this to a lot of people, but I mean, I love her. She's fresh, she's young, she's cool, she completely, you know, trips the Doctor up in the most wonderful way, just with her personality and the way that she's just 
quite carefree. She seems really at ease with herself. She has her troubles, obviously, but most, more than anything, it's almost like she wants to bring the Doctor out of his shell, which was totally, totally needed, in my opinion, because Capaldi was meant to be that grouchy old Doctor. I'm not quite sure how old he is, I don't want to offend the bloke, um, but he is meant to be that kind of person, and I really feel like Bill brought him out of his shell when he really, really needed it, and that's one of my reasons for her being one of my favourite people or female characters in the show. I feel like she just has a lot to her. Um, I feel like there was more. I wish we had her for more than one series. I really, really do. Do I think they should have brought her back for Twice Upon a Time? I mean, I still liked her. I didn't think it was needed, but um, I still liked her. You know, it kind of... I mean, I can't speak for people. And I'm not going to do that. I never really try to. Um, but I feel like it brought to light that you really don't need to be ashamed of who you are. And for me, I felt like she was a really good beacon of light when it came to that sort of thing. I wish she was higher. Maybe she should be. I don't know. We'll revisit it at some point, I'm sure. But for now, she's number nine on the list. Number eight, which I feel like people are going to find a bit confusing if they've watched my companions video, which, by the way, I am definitely redoing. It's the first video I did with my camera, um, with my face, sorry, on the camera. And I genuinely didn't know what aspect ratios were at that point. Hopefully I've learned a little bit now. We'll see. Uh, but number eight is Clara Oswald. Now, more specifically, it's going to be, is it Oswin? The one where she's a Dalek <laughs> and the one where she's Clara um, in Victorian London. I love those incarnations of Clara. I really, really do. I feel like she's got so much character to her. When I, when I first... Um, you know, met Clara or that, what do you call her, incarnation of Clara. I really, really, really liked her. She had so much going for her. She was so lovable and kind and sweet. And she was a genius. And I liked how flirty she was as well, without sounding condescending or like she loved herself or anything like that. She was just pure gold to me. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. I think she was Oswin at that point. Um, and then, of course, you know, we get to the end and it turns out that she's a Dalek. I honestly didn't see that come in. Um, and I was really, really sad at the fact that she couldn't go on an adventure with Smith because I really thought that those two hit it off. thought they had good chemistry. Certainly better chemistry than she had as modern day Clara. Um, and I wasn't, I wasn't as much of a fan of her as I was when she was a previous incarnation. But if we are gonna go on the first and second time we meet Clara, whether it be Dalek Clara or it be, you know, London, Victorian London Clara, then I totally love her and I feel like she's totally worthy of this list. So she's number eight. Number seven, which brings me on to one that I also felt like I needed to explain and maybe put higher, but everyone else that came before her just, it, it made sense to place her here really so she's close to the middle but she's not quite there and that is Amy Pond now I'm going to go from when we met her as a child right up to the time where you know her and Rory do leave and the reason she isn't as high as I want her to be is purely because of the way that she speaks to Rory sometimes and how they had this whole thing of, oh, does Amy really love the Doctor instead of Rory? Oh, she went and she tried it on with him. Um, I wasn't a massive fan of that. It's honestly the only thing that places her this low because she should be so much higher. Um, if I go through her strength as a character, if I go through her growth, she's fantastic. She's funny. She's charming. She's got this air about her that I just really find that I can connect with um, and you know and she's young and she's sprightly I really really like her she's so she's so good to watch and when I go back to episodes that I re-watch um, apart from maybe series one and two it's it's the episodes that she's in that I'll really really you know go back to and enjoy and uh, and every rewatch seems to get better but it is just that little arc that we have of you know oh it's between the Doctor and Rory it should never have been because Matt Smith has that, um, what do you call it? Smith has that air about him that he's really not interested in romantic connections. River's another one that we'll get onto, which um, kind of bends the rules slightly. I'm a little bit biased with River though. Oh, she's coming up anyway. Number four is River Song.
Now, I really go against what I believe Doctor Who should be when it comes to River Song purely because I don't feel like the Doctor should have a romantic interest in a companion or character. He has it with River. I don't believe in the characters or companions owning weapons. River owns loads of weapons. I don't really like characters that think that they're better than anyone else. I don't know if River does that but she can certainly have that air about her. Um, but we really see her character development in this and I think it's fantastic. I love River so, so much. I really, really wish she didn't go. Um, I'd love for her to meet Jodie Whittaker as well. That would be super interesting for me. Uh, but I think she's just an all-round great character. She's fun. She's a little bit violent, which I shouldn't like, but I do. Um, she has this, I don't know what to call it, but she just bounces off the Doctor so so well and I just don't see that in other companions or characters and I just love her energy I really just love everything about her and for that reason she is at number four. Number five another one-time companion that should have worn 100% have been a permanent one and that is Sally Sparrow. If you have spoken to anyone that enjoys Doctor Who, I am going to make you a bet here and now that you will not find anybody that really or will say, even that she's, you know, remotely bad in any way, I love Sally Sparrow. I really, really wish that she was in the show more. I understand, you know, Carrie Mulligan became quite famous and she became, um, you know, in movies and I suppose you can be a bit too famous for Doctor Who unless you're Kylie Minogue. <laughs> but Sally's fun, she's sweet, she's charming, she doesn't let things lie, she really, really goes after what she wants and she protects her friends. Um, she's a really, really sweet woman and I really, really love that character. If it was my, if I was a showrunner and if, if it was up to me, I would have her 100%. I think a lot of people would, but I definitely, definitely would. She's great and she really does you know, emphasise what it means to be a companion in an extremely Doctor Light episode as well. Do you know what? Forget it. She can even be the next Doctor. I think she'd be fabulous at that. What do you think? What do you actually, do you know what? I'm going to make that a thing as well. What do you think? I think she would be a fantastic Doctor. Forget companions. Doctor. <laughs> Number four is one that I wasn't actually expecting to be on this list. Um, I'm quite shocked at myself for putting her here but it's Martha Jones. And I suppose some people might be thinking, yeah, that's right, or no, it's not. But to me, there's some silly things in there that I wish that weren't, but Martha to me is a brilliant companion and fantastic character that is way too underappreciated and way too underrated for my personal liking. Um, I think it's great how we see her as someone that genuinely wants to help people. She's a match for the Doctor as well. She really, really is. She will go out of her way to save people, to ask the right questions, to, you know, really figure out what's going on. Even from that first episode that we meet her, she wasn't exactly, you know, she, wa she wasn't exactly shy. <laughs> you know, we see her and we see her meet the doctor in his, in his hospital bed and she's, you know, snappy straight away. She's like, oh, it wasn't very clever of you to be there with a the tie, was it? Or doing a tie or whatever line it was that she chose to use. Um, sorry, I forget it right now. Um, and she is not afraid to go up against the doctor and tell him really what she thinks of him. Um, you know, I think she's she's clever. She's genius, in my opinion. She's really, really smart. Um, I think that's a really good attribute of her as well. It's really good, I think. I'm not saying that Rose wasn't smart, but she was more street smart whereas you know Clara was academically smart and I felt like that did match up to the doctor in a really really good way of course then her decision to leave the doctor because she felt a certain way like I said there shouldn't have been a romantic thing with Martha in there but that's another situation entirely um I think she's placed right here to be honest um because basically from her decision to leave the doctor and say I'm not doing this I'm getting out of here and I'm not gonna let all the wonderful things that you've taught me changed me, but at the same time, I need to go and live my own life. And I really, really felt that. I was, um, was quite emotional, actually, when she left. I really didn't want her to. So we're in the top three now, and I feel like this number three might surprise you a little, purely because she's usually at the top of every list I have when it comes to any sort of character, companion, 
anything that I can do as a list, she'll probably be number one in all of them. Um, so if you watch any of more of my lists, <laughs> you'll know who's at the top. And it is Donna Noble. Oh, God, she's just my favourite, favourite. Um, obviously, she's number three, so maybe not in this list, but she is my favourite companion she is one of my favorite characters she is just brilliant she is a big ball of why or what makes a fantastic companion and character in the show when i first met or when you know when she first came onto our screens i wasn't that impressed with her which is quite surprising for me seeing as I love her so so much now um but it felt like and I don't know if you're familiar with the Catherine Tate show but it felt like she was doing an impression or a sketch from a Catherine Tate show when she was doing Donna she was just shouting and annoying and everything else <laughs> but, she, <laughs> but I must admit it does speak to her in terms of it really does show what character growth she had in this whole you know time that she was his companion because she became strong she became you know independent she loved the doctor so much as a best friend that was the kind of you know dynamic that i wanted in a tardis team i wanted just pure friendship someone that just went and had a laugh with their mate that was totally fine with me, but I love the way that she was so, you know, she loved Wilf, you know, her granddad meant everything to her, she loved, you know, just going out there exploring, she was one that didn't really know or find a purpose in life, and she did, which made it even more heartbreaking when it meant that she had to go back to that life, and back to being Donna, who, you know, really couldn't hold down a job or a relationship, you know, just sort of floated, it's such a shame. Oh, well, I suppose it doesn't matter anymore anyway, because the doctor bought her a lottery ticket, so she's fine. <laughs> but she's number three on this list because I just love her so, so much, just because of the kind of person that she is and was. She's great. And I just, oh, she's great. Number two, and this is also one that I wasn't expecting until I just, it, she just came into my brain and I thought, how on earth did I not have her as, you know, being a great female character in my favourite show? And that is Harriet Jones. If you are going to turn around and tell me that you do not like Harriet Jones, oh, we're going to, well, we knew you are going to fall out, let me tell you. <laughs> um, I love Harriet Jones so, so much. You know, she, she started off and she still was, in my opinion, this lovely, lovely woman. You know, she wasn't that bothered about being famous or really being heard that much. She was just someone that wanted to do the right thing. And I think that she did that in spades. No matter what episode she was in or no matter what she did, it was always to do the right thing. Now, I understand the Doctor, you know, the fact, no, I don't understand the Doctor. I never agreed with the fact that he you know, deposed her for something that I felt was really right. I think she made the right decision. Um, I honestly thought they were going to go back and say, you know, that maybe he was wrong, but he never said that he made a mistake. I really do think they think that he did. I really do think that they did with that because she really did make the right decision, in my opinion. But, you know, she came across as a woman, you know, she wasn't bothered by the aliens. I think even the doctor says it. She wasn't bothered by the aliens with the Slavine. She wasn't bothered about, you know, dying. It was more that she didn't want to leave her mother alone. And I just thought from that moment, she was the sweetest, kindest woman. And she would not be justified if she wasn't on my list. I can't believe I forgot about her anyway. But the fact that you know, she came back as well, and in her final appearance, she was still did the right thing. She even said that she questioned herself about whether she was wrong with the Sycorax, but she knew at some point it would come back and bite them all, and she needed to do the right thing, and she gave her life to do that, and that is why she's number two. But, of course, if there's a number two, then there's a number one in this list. If there's a second, there's always a first, and the number one female character on my list is Sarah Jane Smith. But before I go into why I think she's fantastic and why she is number one on this list, I do have a few honourable mentions and I'd like to get them out of the way now. I know we thrust ourselves upon you, but we've been through a great deal together since then. And all we've been through will remain with us always. It'll probably be the most exciting part of my life. Doctor, we're different people. 
And now we have a chance to go home. Mine, I believe. Well, I made up the name charges from the initials, time and relative dimension in space. I thought you'd both understand when you saw the different dimensions inside from those outside. So my number one about, you know, Sarah Jane Smith is purely her time on the show. I mean, she starts off with the third Doctor, um, you know, goes through the fourth and then comes back with the tenth. I thought that was so, so lovely. I understand she was fan service, but it was lovely to see her back. It really, really was. She brought so much warmth energy you know and even though she'd gotten older she didn't stop with what she was doing she was still investigating she was still being a sarah jane that i got to know when i started watching classic who she is such a strong woman and i just love her all the more for it she will still go to the doctor and tell him that he's wrong she was never this damsel in distress that constantly needed help yeah i know she said she missed it and she made a comment in in school reunion about the doctor being her life but i can kind of understand that you know if you've been traveling with someone and you get to see and do things that nobody else will ever get to do and see i mean hopefully we'll all get to do and see i don't know but to do things that no other person could and that she was angry at him because he just left her in aberdeen of all places she could not be further from croydon and she was just Great, you know, I know that she didn't get on with Rose at the start. I think that plays more into Rose than it does Sarah Jane. Um, but she is just brilliant. And I'm so sad that, you know, Elizabeth Sladen isn't with us to come back and play Sarah Jane Smith some more. But she was brilliant. And I honestly couldn't think of anyone better that I could put in my number one top spot. But as always, what do you think? Am I right? Am I wrong? Are there people that you would put there that I haven't? Are there people that you think, oh, you were totally wrong with that and I'd have either placed them higher, lower or not be there at all? Please let me know. Like I said, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram. Um, I'll pop a couple of links below and a little bit of a description just in case, you know, you want to follow me on there. Um, Because I'd love to get to know you guys as I always do. Um, Please, 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 that subscribe button is so, so, you know, helpful to me. It really helps my algorithm. Them, um, and it just lets me know really what people like to hear about. I've also checked out the amount of people that are subscribed uh, versus who watches my videos and it is a very very small percentage, it's actually 1.8% so if you could click that subscribe button it would mean a lot to me. Please let me know, it's really really beneficial to me to get to know what you think as well and to get to know you. Um, so that is my ranking for Doctor Who female characters. I've decided that Doctor Who videos are going to be bi-weekly just because I'm so busy and I can't keep up with a commitment to say that they're only going to be once a week. Um, I will be increasing this as time goes on, but I've got so many ideas and so many things that I need to, you know, get out um, and put out there for you guys. Uh, but until next time, I will see you very, very soon. Oh.